And if I want to move it, I have to actually get into space, be in the physical world, and, and make contact with it. Today, we get to talk about a princess. We're talking about Princess Elizabeth of Bohemia. She was a real princess. This was in the 17th century. Her father was the king of something. She exchanged letters with Descartes. And so Descartes, you may remember, published the Meditations in 1641. And he exchanged letters with Princess Elizabeth, who was really smart. And in 1643, in some letters in May, she raised what I'm calling the problem of mental causation. This was a problem for Descartes' theory of mind. So let's just start by recapping what Descartes thought about the mind. Descartes, you may remember from our discussion of Meditation 6, was a dualist. And so he thought that there were two things, dual. Uh, there's the mind and the body. And he thought that these were just different types of stuff. Right? The mind was a thinking thing, and it was immaterial. It wasn't extended in space. Um, it wasn't physical. The body, on the other hand, was extended. It, it took up space. It had height and width and depth. Um, and it's a material, this comes to the same thing, it's a material, physical thing. But in addition to the fact that Descartes thought that there were two kinds of stuff in the universe, the mental stuff and the physical stuff, Descartes also thought that these two causally interacted with one another. That is, stuff happening in the mind caused the body to move. And movements in the body caused stuff to happen in the mind. So Descartes was an advocate not just of dualism, but of interactionist dualism. And just to sort of continue the recap, Descartes had a specific theory of where the interaction happened. It happened in the pineal gland which is a gland in the brain, and Descartes thought that in the pineal gland there were, there were something that he called the animal spirits. Descartes was a scientist um, and a mathematician and a philosopher working in the 17th century, and he thought that in this gland, in the brain, there were very like wispy, airy things, um, and that that's where it happened. That's where the mind got in and made the body move. And that's also where signals from the physical body got into the mind. So here's an example of some mental causation, right? You have a memory. Let's say you remember your grandmother uh, giving you cookies. And that memory, in combination with your belief or your knowledge that your grandmother passed away or whatever, that makes you feel sad. Those are both mental events. And so now you're sad, that's what's going on in your mind, and the sadness on Descartes' picture causes a movement in the animal spirits. And then the animal spirits, which are in the pineal gland, uh, they cause some neurons to fire, which ultimately sends a signal uh, to your tear ducts, and, and then you cry. Descartes didn't know about neurons, but you know he had some other idea of the sort of internal workings of the brain. Anyway, the point is this is an example of some mental stuff, like this stuff up here. This is all mental. And some physical stuff, like all of this stuff right here, this is physical. You have the mental stuff causing the physical stuff. Well, Princess Elizabeth in May of 1643 raises a problem for this sort of story, this story on which the mind and the body are distinct, but also they nonetheless causally interact. Nonetheless, the mental stuff can cause stuff to happen in the body. Here's what she says. I beg of you to tell me how the human soul can determine the movement of the animal spirits in the body so as to perform voluntary acts, being as it is merely a conscious substance. Okay, let's pause there. She's already telling us what kind of a problem she's raising. She hasn't given us the problem, but it seems to her that it's impossible that the mental stuff could move the animal spirits, could, could cause a physical event in the world, because the mental stuff up here, the memories and the sadness or whatever, 
Those are immaterial. They're merely conscious. They're merely thinking. They don't have any physical body with which to move the physical stuff. So what she's doing is she's raising a problem for this arrow. These arrows, by the way, are supposed to, you know, represent causal interaction, like the memory causes the sadness, and the neurons cause the tears, or whatever. This causation, it seems to Princess Elizabeth that it's impossible. At least it's impossible if we understand the mind in the way that Descartes understands the mind, as an immaterial, non-physical, thinking, conscious thing. Okay, then she goes on in the next sentence to present the problem. This problem is a big problem. It continues to be a problem for this kind of dualist theory today. So right here in this letter in May of 1643, Princess Elizabeth just drops this bomb right now in the next sentence and it explodes and it, you know, debatably or arguably destroys Descartes' theory of the mind, even though this theory is of course still very popular. Um, and it's not clear if the dualist, even up until now, has an answer to this problem from Princess Elizabeth. For the determination of movement seems always to come about from the moving bodies being propelled, to depend on the kind of impulse it gets from what sets it in motion, or again, on the nature and shape of this latter thing's surface. Now, the first two conditions involve contact, and the third involves that the impelling thing has extension. But you utterly exclude extension from your notion of soul, and contact seems to me incompatible with a thing's being immaterial. Okay, what happened there? There was a lot going on. So, in that first part of the sentence, we get a list, a list of three ways in which something gets moved. The first item on the list there is self-propulsion. That's when something moves itself. It has some internal mechanism in it to propel it forward. That's one. The second is that when something gets pushed by something else. And the third, which is really not all that different from the second, is that when the motion of a thing is determined by the nature and shape of the thing that pushed it. Let's just go through the, the part of the sentence where Princess Elizabeth goes through these three because it happens very quickly. For the determination of movement seems always to come about from, okay, here's the first one, the moving bodies being propelled. Okay, that's number one, self-propulsion. The, the moving body, that is the body that gets moved, that, that ends up moving, right, it propels. It's, it is propelled. And then we get the next one, to depend on the kind of impulse it gets from what sets it in motion. So the it there is the thing that is pushed, and the thing that is pushed gets an impulse from something else. That's how it gets moved. And then we get the third, or again, on the nature and shape of this latter thing's surface. Right, so the latter thing there is the thing doing the pushing, right? And so that's number three, the nature and, and shape of the pushing thing. She basically says in this sentence here, look, there's only so many ways that something can be moved. And then she's going to go through all of these ways, rather quickly, in only one more sentence, and just say, in all of these cases, it can't be a mind that does the pushing. A mind is not the kind of thing that can be involved in any of these things. Or at least not a mind as Descartes understands it, right? Because it's important that Descartes understands a mind as immaterial, non-physical. If the mind was part of the physical world, then this wouldn't end up being a problem at all. And indeed, later in the course, we're going to go through various versions of physicalism. Physicalism is the theory that the mind is just part of the physical world, and so it won't have a problem moving physical stuff because it is physical stuff. Anyway, here's what Princess Elizabeth said. I'm just reading the same sentence again. Now, the first two conditions involve contact. Okay, so in these two cases, right, that's the first two conditions, in both of these cases, it seems like the, there needs to be physical contact going on, right? Think about it. You know, if, if this marker is gonna move, right, and if I wanna move it, I have to actually get into space, be in the physical world, and, and make contact with it. But we can already see that this is gonna be a problem for the mind as Descartes understands it, because 
the mind can't make physical contact with anything. It can't be in the physical world. How's the mind going to move this marker? And indeed, how's it going to move the animal spirits or my hand or anything like that, right? The mind, in order to move the animal spirits, the mind would have to go into space and push them or pull them or something like that. But it seems like it can't make contact. And the third involves that the impelling thing has extension. Okay, so here Princess Elizabeth thinks that we needed contact. And here she thinks that you need extension. In order for something to have a nature and a shape, in order for something to have a shape, right, and that shape to affect how it moves other things, well then it needs to be stretched out in space. It needs to have a height and a width and a depth. It needs to be extended. And then Princess Elizabeth makes the following point. But you utterly exclude extension from your notion of the soul. As far as extension goes, Descartes explicitly says the mind or the soul is not the kind of thing that is extended in space. So it can't move the body this way. And contact seems to me incompatible with a thing's being immaterial. And contact, like if something is immaterial, if it's not made of physical matter, then it can't make contact with other things. It can't touch them. That's the problem. The problem is that Descartes thinks that the mind has no physical existence, and yet he needs to think that it moves the physical body. And that just seems impossible, Princess Elizabeth points out. If the mind isn't in the physical world, then it can't hit things in the physical world. It, it, it can't move anything. In order to move a physical object, you need to be in space. And the mind just isn't. That's it. That's the problem. This arrow seems to be impossible, Princess Elizabeth is pointing out. And Descartes has some responses in these letters, but it's rather widely acknowledged that his responses are inadequate. And there might be some, some good answer to this problem. Lots of contemporary philosophers are dualists anyway, or at least some of them. Um, and so there must be some putatively decent answers to this problem, but if you're understanding the problem, it should seem like it's a devastating problem. How can the soul or the mind, which isn't in space, move physical stuff in space? In order to move physical stuff, you have to get in there and touch the stuff. But minds, immaterial minds at least, they can't touch anything. Okay, so like I said, if you understand the problem, this should seem like a devastating problem. If it doesn't seem devastating to Descartes' version of dualism, then you're not there yet, that's fine, go reread the letters and go rewatch this video or whatever, because once you get this problem, you're gonna think to yourself, oh wow, this is a bad problem for Descartes. I wanna read one more sentence that comes in the next letter from Princess Elizabeth. This was also part of the reading that we read for today. And I must confess that I could more readily allow that the soul has matter and extension than that an immaterial being has the capacity of moving a body and being affected by it. What Princess Elizabeth is doing there is she's giving Descartes sort of an out, right? She's saying, look, it really seems impossible for an immaterial mind to move a physical body. What's more plausible, perhaps, is that this mind is material, that it's extended, that it exists in space. Maybe we just, Princess Elizabeth is thinking, we just drop the dualist part altogether, and we just say that the soul, even though it's the part of a human that thinks, is some spatial physical stuff in the physical world. The other option, of course, which Princess Elizabeth doesn't mention, uh, but will come into the discussion later in this course, is that you could keep the dualism, right? You could keep the idea that the mind is some non-material, non-physical thing, and you could get rid of the interaction. You could just say, yeah, that's right. Mental stuff never causes physical stuff. I want to point out, though, that that's an incredibly radical view, right? You'd just be eliminating this sort of arrow. 
it's radical because it sure seems like events in our mind, like sadness, can cause events in the physical world, like tears. Or, you know, my decision to move my arm in a certain way can cause a physical event, which is the motion of my arm. That sure seems like how things work. So to keep the dualist part, you might have to get rid of interactionism, or to keep the interactionism, you might have to get rid of the dualism. At least, those are the only choices if we can't find a solution to Princess Elizabeth's problem.